What is going on, YouTube? So, um, again, guys, I'm um, sorry. It's been, a, it's been a really busy time around the trade deadline. Uh, I just talked about Amon Shumpert in the last video. Again, I, it, it, you guys are still going to be able to get my NBA mock draft uh, today. Um, but first, I did want to talk about one piece of news that just came out. Um, I told you guys that I would try to keep you guys as up to date on the Paul George situation as news kept coming out. And uh, uh, Woj just... Uh, published an article on Yahoo talking about um, Pacers assessing all trade options for Paul George and um, the fact that his name's still circulating around the rumor mill for the trade deadline is a little worrisome for me as a Pacers fan, but I guess it's good they're keeping their options open to some degree. Um, so the situation at hand, it sounds like they're assessing situations to find the best possible situation for them, um, whether that be building guys around Paul George, very similar to the Julio Loca for rumor going around right now, um, or that was going around yesterday. Um, or is it worth trading trading him and then building around Miles Turner or bringing in another player to build around um, if they can get a if they can get a favorable deal for PG? Um, you know, I, I've seen that the Boston Celtics, uh, of course, it seems like it's always the Celtics right now, um, are the team that is most interested in PG at, or at the time being. Um, or I guess better way to put that would be the Pacers are most interested in trading to the Celtics so they feel like the Celtics could put the best possible deal together. Now, um, one thing to keep in mind with the Celtics is the amount of players that they are interested in. Right now it seems Andre Drummond's name has been thrown around with them. DeMarcus Cousins was. Um, Jimmy Butler's name's been thrown out a lot with Boston. So, especially if they land a guy like Jimmy Butler, that immediately fills that need for a three, um, and they would no longer have any need for a guy like Paul George. Um, it'd be very interesting if Paul George went to went to the Celtics. I think that'd be a great fit in Boston. Granted, I don't like talking about this because I love Paul George. I hope he never leaves Indiana. Um, but I think any Pacers fan feels that way. So, unless they, I guess, unless they land a better deal for him, you know, he's, he has seemed a little, obviously he's been a little unhappy with the situation in Indiana right now, just, you know, uh, the fact that over the last two, what, yeah, two seasons, they've, they've been a consistent, like, projected six or seven seed in the East, and uh, it's like, kind of looked like that the tra or that's the track they're on right now, um, and it might not get better anytime soon. So, uh, Larry Bird assessing his options, trying to figure out, you know what the best situation will be for the Pacers and see who can actually offer a good deal for Paul George or can they get um, another player I would say preferably in the backcourt um, to kind of help I know Jeff Teague's been having a decent year but to kind of help out maybe at the two spot where Monte Ellis has been kind of not worth it especially for the like there's probably more dead money tied up in Monte Ellis just for the, his value than any other player in the league I'd say I think he's getting around 11.2 million right now um it might even be up to 13 or 4 I can't remember it's it's a lot of money that's not worth it for a player uh that is a defensive liability and he isn't even that efficient on the offensive end of the floor this year granted um if they can find a way to move Monte Ellis as well. I think that'd be a big uh, deciding factor if there's a team out there that wants to take the risk um, and needs that immediate offense. Uh, a guy that can uh, be maybe like a maybe like a more um, ball dominant player in the second rotation um, for quite a few teams. Then I think that would be um, a good situation for the Pacers and whatever team wants to trade. Um, and I don't think you'd have to get a whole lot in return. I think the Pacers, as long as they get a little bit, maybe. Future pay. I don't know. I don't know. It'd most likely just be a dump at that point for Monte Ellis. But that's kind of where I'm at right now, thinking about the whole uh, situation with Paul George right now. Of course, I hope he doesn't leave. But um, in the end, I'd like the Pacers to be on an upward track. Um, instead, uh, you know, I, I, I could see where Paul George getting frustrated, you know, five or four, around th actually not even five, three, four years ago, you know, the Pacers finished as one seed, uh, one year, 56 win team, two straight Eastern Conference Finals looked like the team that could compete with the Heat and then maybe be that team in the East that could compete for a while with LeBron if he stayed in the East, and he did. Um, and then you had the whole breakup of David West, Roy Hibbert, uh, George Hill, and uh, Paul George is really the only piece left from that team, and they're not as good. So, And really the only piece they have to build around aside from Paul George right now is Miles Turner. 
Um, you know, they have some good pieces around it. Al Jefferson, Jeff Teague, uh, Thad Young, Seraphin's been playing well. There are good pieces on the team, but they're still lacking in some key areas, consistency being one of them. Um, and it might be time to move in a new direction. Um, I, I still don't think Nate McMillan was a good hire either. But anyway, uh, that's beside the point. So that's pretty much it. See ya.